Hi, my name is Scott, and in this video, I'm going to talk about what a setup debate is and how you can use the setup debate that is included in this video on the healthcare topic to get better at debate. So what is a setup debate? A setup debate is really just a specific type of drill that helps you get better at debate. I think more specifically, I would say that it simulates the conditions or the environment of a real debate with you being an active participant in the debate. What does that mean? Basically, what that means is you're going to hear me give part of an AC and part of an NC. And the purpose of this is for you to give that 1AR speech in the debate. It's kind of like watching a debate online and giving the next speech in the debate while hitting pause, but with the specific purpose of doing this for the upcoming healthcare topic. The reason I'm doing this is this is the entry ticket for all of my classes this week, and I thought that it would be really helpful for them and anybody else who finds this video to try to get started on learning the healthcare topic. So uh, if you want to learn more about setup debates, I'm going to link a video down below that I did sometime last year that goes through exactly how setup debates work. But the way that this specific setup debate is going to work is that you are going to see me read an AC and an NC. I will include a link below to the documents that I'm going to read in the debate, all of the cards and stuff like that. But basically, you're going to hear an AC on a pandemic, pandemics preparedness contention that I think is going to be one of the most popular basic contentions on the topic. Pretty much anybody who's going to do research is going to find this Galvani article that I use to start the contention. This is not meant to like necessarily be used in a debate or the answers that I would necessarily make. It's more meant to just be a warm up for debaters on the topic. So the AC is going to say a basic pandemics contention. The NC is going to answer that pandemics contention. I think I took one card from open evidence. It's like a disease impact. The rest are just like random cards that I cut. And that's the extent of the video. So you'll see those two speeches. And the purpose of it is for you to give that third speech in the debate, especially if you're in one of my classes, because this is what we are doing to start class this week. So without further ado, here is the AC in the debate. Well, really just the pandemic's preparedness contention in this debate. Hope you enjoy. All right, so this is the AC speech. Again, a reminder, I'm only going to read one contention, so it's not timed or anything like that. This is just supposed to get you warmed up, ready, and giving some speeches. So here we go. Contention 1, Pandemic Preparedness. A U.S. single-payer universal healthcare system prevents future emerging pandemics and diseases, COVID-19 proves. The affirmative increases access to care, which saves lives, increases treatments and diagnosis, and decreases transmission and hospitalizations, Galvani in 22. Universal healthcare has pandemic preparedness. Universal healthcare could have alleviated the mortality caused by a confluence of negative COVID related factors during a pandemic. The lives saved of a single payer universal healthcare system relative to the status quo would be even greater. For Americans who are uninsured and underinsured, financial barriers exacerbated transmission. Universal healthcare would alleviate the mortality caused by the confluence of these factors. A single payer universal healthcare system would have saved about 212,000 lives in 20. 2020 alone. The United States does not provide universal health care, resulting in preventable deaths. Inadequate health care insurance coverage has exacerbated the COVID-19 pandemic on both individual and population levels. Concerns over medical expenses, delay diagnosis and treatment, elevating case fatality rates, postponement of diagnosis, and cases of isolation, fuels, transmission, the loss of employment, and therefore insurance coverage during the COVID-19 pandemic further contributes to premature 
mortality, 29.4% of lives that were reported to be lost due to COVID-19 would have likely have been saved if there would have been universal health care throughout the pandemic. The number of lives that could have been saved in 2020 by universal health care from both non-COVID conditions and COVID-19 would be 338,594 attributable to incomplete insurance coverage. The prevalence of those underlying conditions which exacerbate COVID-19 severity would be reduced via equitable access to care. Hypertension specifically increases the rate of COVID-19 mortality by 188%. Diabetes has been similarly been associated with significantly increased COVID-19 severity and mortality. Financial barriers reduce and delay care for COVID-19. Removing financial obstacles to care can accelerate diagnosis, more timely medical attention, and increases the probability of recovery from COVID-19 infection. Reducing the time to diagnosis also ensures a more prompt isolation, which in turn reduces transmission to others. The removal of cost barriers and alleviation of comorbidities would have reduced the risk of COVID-19 death and hospitalizations during the outbreak surges. High demand for COVID-19 hospital services often delayed procedures related to other health conditions. Reduced hospitalization rates facilitated by Medicare for All would have blunted these COVID-19 peaks and thereby freed capacity for non-COVID care. Universal health care coverage would have stood the country in a better stead against a pandemic. The emergence of, of virulent pathogens is becoming more frequent, driven by climate change and other global forces. Universal single payer health care system is fundamental to pandemic preparedness. To bolster pandemic preparedness, now is the time to transition to a health care system that can better serve the American people. Next is that future pandemics cause human extinction in the next 100 years. The affirmative is reverse causal. Diamandius in 2022. The mother of all battles, viruses versus humans. Can humans avoid extinction in the ne next 50 to 100 years? We are now starting to think. We now have to start thinking and planning on how to face the next dangerous pandemic. Is there any evidence that even worse pandemics could strike us in the near future and threaten the existence of the human race? The answer is unequivocally yes. It is not necessarily to get infected by viruses found in bats, pangolins, and other exotic animals that live in remote forests to be endangered. Credible scientific evidence indicates that the human gut microbiota harbor billions of viruses. These diseases could result in the complete shutdown of our civilization and probably the gradual extinction of the human race. Some hypothetical scenarios that could cause the human race misery, even extinction, preventative measures could reverse or delay the projected adverse outcomes. Thank you. Next, I'm going to give the NC responding to the pandemic preparedness contention, and this is going to be the speech that you are responsible to responding to. So, first is disease can't cause extinction, ORD in 20. Global pandemic falls short of a threat to humanity's deep biological theories suggest pathogens are unlikely to lead to extinction. These include anti-correlational between infectiousness and lethality, extreme rarity that kill more than 75%, tendency to become less virulent and optimal virulent civilizations recover. 50% death rate was not enough to precipitate collapse. It gives reason to believe civilization is likely to make it through future events, even if global, the strongest against ex existential risk is the fossil record. The risk above 0.1% is incompatible with how long humanity has lasted. Second is there's no internal link to global pandemic preparedness. The affirmative improves healthcare in a single country that already has tier one infrastructure and has dealt with a pandemic in the immediate past, which means that there's no risk that the affirmative uniquely causes this. Third is that the difference in COVID mortality between Canada and the U.S. was not a result of single payer, but rather cultural differences. And because of a focus on, in Canada on public health rather than health care. This specifically answers Galvani's study, Fisman, in 2022. Unsure whether the gap in SARS-CoV-2 driven death between the two countries can be explained by the difference in access to health care as a result of universal uh, 
health insurance. Much of the gap in outcomes between Canada and the United States is a product of a stronger public health response in Canada and perhaps also of cultural rather than policy differences between the two. Healthcare and public health are distinct enterprises. Trust in government in the United States is low and declining while trust in the government is far higher and appears to be rising in Canada. Acceptance of sacrifice of individual needs or convenience for purposes of disease control has likely been easier to achieve in Canada than in the United States as Canadian society is more communitarian and less individualistic than the U.S. society. Fourth is a double bind. Either the diseases in the future are not lethal enough to cause extinction or they are so lethal that they cause death before transmission is possible. This isn't, this is real life. This isn't Plague Inc. This isn't how diseases work. Fifth and lastly is that a multifaceted global response is the only way to stop future pandemics. One single country going to single payer is such a small piece of the internal link pie. Lancet in 2022. Early warning surveillance should be enacted alongside continued support for global genomic surveillance to, to sequence pathogen genomes and the sharing of this information globally, reform of the global architecture for pandemic preparedness, and for considerable changes to the way in which the WHO is funded and functions. The vaccine gap between high-income countries and LMICs are must also be closed, allowing for equitable production by increasing regional manufacture and supply. Progress will depend on countries being open about the ongoing burden of disease and strain on health systems with active lines of communication. Preparedness for future pandemics must be multifaceted. Success will depend on a proactive, globally collective responses. Thank you. So, if you've made it this far, especially if you're in one of my classes this week, because this is what we're doing to start class, um, the goal of this speech is to give a 1AR. So, you're going to give a 1AR, you're going to be AF, you're going to defend pandemic preparedness. So, you're preparing to give what I'm going to say is going to be a 90-second speech. So, you have 90 seconds to give your speech. I'll give you a couple minutes to prepare right now. Um, but, you know, as a sample, your speech should probably give a little overview to what your contention says and then go through and answer all of these arguments specifically and extending, comparing, contrasting all of these arguments from the AC and the NC where they need to be. So hopefully, uh, if you are not in one of my classes, this is really helpful and will help kickstart your debating semester. And if you're in one of my classes, look forward to hearing one of your speeches in a couple of minutes. See ya.